AOP WWE Superstar injures arm on Monday Night Raw. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one stop for information on orthopedic injuries and sports medicine that's easy to understand for everybody. Okay. If you want to know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Stable Knees. I'm also on TikTok at Dr. Chris Rayner. If you're looking for workouts, exercises, or information on injury prevention, be sure to check us out on our sister channel on YouTube, Human 2.0. And of course, I want everybody to learn about orthopedics and sports medicine. Help me educate everybody by sharing this video with someone you know who you think will be interested in this topic. That being said, hit the freaking bell and let's get on with the topic of the day. So who is it that got injured this time? Gazim Salmani is a Dutch professional wrestler, a former mixed martial artist, and a world pro kickboxing heavyweight champion who is currently signed to the WWE. He is one half of the wrestling AOP, formerly known as the Authors of Pain. He performs under the ring name Rezar. He was apparently injured recently at some point during the WWE Monday Night Raw event on March 9th of 2020. So what happened? It is not entirely clear at what point during the evening that Rezar was injured. Early in the evening, Rezar was involved in an altercation backstage between Kevin Owens and Akam, Seth Rollins, and Murphy. The AOP tag team, Rollins and Murphy teamed up to brutalize Kevin Owens backstage. At this time, it appeared that Rezar did not have any problems with either arm, as he proceeded to manhandle Owens without any limitations. He participated fully in the spot and did not appear to be favoring either arm at this time. The beatdown of Kevin Owens was interrupted by officials backstage, and Rezar left with his accomplices without any obvious ill effects. Later that evening, AOP joined Seth Rollins and Murphy in an eight-man tag team match against the teams of the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits, the reigning Raw Tag Team Champions. At the outset of this match, it did not appear that Rezar was injured or that he was favoring either arm. However, later in the match, we can see that Rezar is now favoring his right arm. He continually keeps his right arm flexed at his side, and he does not appear to be using it during any of the moves during the remainder of the match. Despite his apparent injury, Rezar completes the match. Later, Brian Alvarez reported on the Tuesday episode of Wrestling Observer Live that Rezar had suffered an arm injury during the bout. He stated that it is believed that Rezar suffered a torn biceps and that he is still being evaluated. Similar news was reported by the creators on Cultaholic Wrestling on March the 11th of 2020. Cultaholic commented on AOP's bad luck since joining the main roster, citing Akam's leg injury in January 2019 before Rezar's most recent misfortune. They reported that Rezar might be out for six to nine months with this injury. So this leads us to the questions of what is a bicep injury and how does it happen? The biceps is a muscle that originates in the shoulder and terminates at a point just past the elbow. The bicep is a muscle that has two heads, a long head that originates within the shoulder and a short head which originates outside of the shoulder joint at the coracoid process. The bicep's main role is contrary to what most people believe. Although people spend an inordinate amount of time doing bicep curls in an effort to increase the size of their guns, the bicep's main role is in fact not flexion of the elbow. That is only its secondary role. The bicep's main role is actually supination of the forearm. Supination and pronation are two opposing movements that occur at the level of the wrist, but originate at the level of the elbow. Pronation is the movement where your palm rotates to face downwards, while supination is the movement where your palm rotates to face upwards. It is easy to remember which movement is which by recalling that in order to hold a bowl of soup, you need to have your forearm supinated with your palm facing upwards. When an injury occurs, the bicep can be injured at any point along its length. This includes its origin within the shoulder, the muscle belly itself, or at its insertion distally on the radial tuberosity in the forearm. 
Injuries that involve the tendons, either proximally or distally, are the most common. More than 95% of ruptures occur in males, and injuries typically occur in the patient's dominant arm. Usually, these injuries occur during middle age, but they can occur at other times as well. Bicep tendon ruptures are typically caused by sudden eccentric load on the flexed and supinated forearm. This mechanism can result in rupture of the tendon proximally within or near the shoulder or of the tendon distally near the radial tuberosity in the forearm. Risk factor for rupture include age, smoking, use of corticosteroids, and overuse. Additional rare causes include the use of quinolone antibiotics, which microscopically have razor sharp crystals, diabetes, lupus, and chronic kidney disease. Excessive loading and sudden stress can also lead to biceps tendon rupture in weightlifters. Patients who suffer from biceps tendon rupture often complain of sudden sharp pain in the anterior forearm following sudden extension of a flexed elbow. Oftentimes, they will feel an audible pop on the affected arm, and they experience pain during resisted flexion or supination. They often complain of tenderness at the superior margin of the muscle belly. In some cases, there is bruising near the point of maximal tenderness. Pain with this injury can persist for weeks, sometimes even months. Sometimes pain will decrease if the tendon is completely torn. Some patients will also experience pain with supination. The physical examination can help to give the correct diagnosis. Patients who have a proximal bicep tendon rupture or a rupture near the shoulder joint will appear with a bulging mass in the upper arm with a visible gap proximal to the mass. This is known as the Popeye sign or the Popeye arm. These patients present with tenderness at the superior margin of the muscle belly. Patients who have suffered a distal biceps tendon rupture, on the other hand, will often have bruising, swelling, and tenderness in the antecubital fossa of the elbow. Sometimes the muscle will be retracted to the upper arm and a defect of the distal tendon at the level of the elbow is palpable. Usually, a detailed history and physical exam are sufficient for proper diagnosis of this injury. Typically, additional imaging is not required. However, an ultrasound can be performed to corroborate the diagnosis. MRI is rarely required for diagnosis, but may help to distinguish between complete and partial tears, muscle substance versus tendon tears, and the degree of retraction of the muscle belly. Ruptures of the proximal head of the biceps may be treated non-surgically. However, there is a residual cosmetic deformity and patients may suffer from intermittent cramps of the biceps muscle. When surgery is indicated for this injury, biceps tenodesis is the most common procedure that is performed. And this is just a procedure where we reattach the torn tendon at the front of the arm, either below or above the pectoralis major tendon. This procedure may be performed using either an open or an arthroscopic technique. Good clinical outcomes have been demonstrated using both approaches. However, there is not sufficient data to show superiority of surgical treatments over non-surgical treatments for proximal biceps tendon ruptures. On the other hand, operative treatment is typically recommended for rupture of the distal biceps tendon to regain maximum strength of elbow flexion and forearm supination and to relieve pain in the antecubital fossa. So how then will this injury be treated? Assuming that Rezar has suffered a distal biceps tendon rupture, then he will undergo operative fixation of this injury. Although there are a number of methods used to repair the tendon distally, the most common method currently used is a single incision approach, where a single incision is used in the anterior aspect of the antecubital fossa, through which the ruptured bicep is retrieved and then subsequently repaired. Dissection is performed at the level of the elbow to reveal the radial tuberosity in the operative field. 
The biceps tendon is then prepared and then reattached to the bone of the radial tuberosity using a suitable implant. This is my preferred technique for fixing distal bicep tendon ruptures and I have obtained good success using this surgical approach and suture button fixation. Following surgery, patients are usually immobilized with their elbow in 90 degrees of flexion for approximately three weeks before gentle range of motion is begun. Once further healing has occurred between six to eight weeks and the biceps tendon repair is better able to tolerate loads, we can presume that Rezar will begin physical rehabilitation in earnest. He will work first to restore his full range of motion at the level of the elbow, working to obtain both full extension and full flexion of the elbow in both pronation and supination. After this, he will begin strengthening to restore baseline function first before progressing further to more robust strengthening. This process can be expected to take anywhere from four to six months. Therefore, it is likely that he will be out of commission for a period of at least that length of time. He may be required to wear a protective brace a la JJ Watt upon his return. So when will Rezar be able to return to wrestling? If all goes well with Rezar's surgery and his rehabilitation, we can expect him to return to wrestling at approximately six to eight months time. Hopefully, once he returns, AOP's run of bad luck in the WWE will finally come to an end. And while Rezar may not be a sailor, at least for the moment, he is a better tag team partner to Popeye than he is to Akam. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.